It isn't often in engineering that we see an obsolete design reintroduced to replace the very technology that caused it to become obsolete. Yet, in the case of the aviation industry, this could be about to happen with the return of an aircraft many believe to be an inevitable casualty of the airplane revolution. That being the airship. Before the introduction of commercial airliners, airships, also known as dirigible balloons, represented the conventional method of controlled, powered air travel. The first airships were already being pioneered in the late 18th century, and by the 1930s, rigid airships known as Zeppelins were being used to transport passengers far distances across the Atlantic. Up until their phasing out in the 1940s, most airships used hydrogen as the lighter-than-air gas that provided the lift when flying. Despite the obvious safety concerns around hydrogen's flammability, the alternative helium was far more expensive and hard to come by, especially due to the US's restrictions on helium exports at the time. The world would see these safety concerns realised in several disasters, most notably of the Hindenburg airship in 1937 and the British R101 in 1930. In both cases, the hydrogen in the balloon was ignited, causing a deadly inferno that would lead to many fatalities. Many other crashes also highlighted the limitations of flying airships in bad weather. And it was these safety issues combined with the rapid technological advancement of aeroplanes that led to the ultimate phase out of airships for passenger travel beyond the 1940s. So, how can a technology pioneered in the late 18th century and later deemed to be antiquated be threatening to replace the cutting edge technology of modern airliners? As the world scrambles to address the ever-growing issue of climate change and global warming, the aviation industry often finds itself in the firing line. Flying is one of the most carbon-intensive ways to travel, yet billions of passengers and tens of millions of metric tons of freight are transported by aircraft each year. According to recent research, the aviation industry contributes 2.4% to the global annual carbon dioxide emissions and is responsible for around 4% of human-induced global warming. In the wake of ever-growing concerns surrounding the climate emergency, the industry has come under increased pressure to find carbon-neutral transport solutions. And here enters the airship. Airships fly at slower speeds than planes and can stay afloat without expending any extra energy. These factors combined make them a far more carbon efficient alternative to aeroplanes, and the industry is already starting to make steps to reintroduce them. Recently, British-based company Hybrid Air Vehicles, or HAV, announced the reservation of 10 of their Airlander 10 airships by the Spanish airline Air Nostrum. Delivery is set to start in 2026, and HAV says that the hybrid electric models will provide a 90% reduction in carbon dioxide emissions compared to the aeroplanes used at the moment. The product being offered by HAV represents an innovative and modernised version of the airships that once ruled the skies, with new features and technologies that allow it to compete with modern aircraft. The Airlander 10 has an unconventional design in that it is made up of two hulls rather than one. The lift in this case is not only provided by the helium that fills the aircraft, but also through the aerodynamics of the balloon itself and vectored thrust from the engines. The combined lift from three separate sources make Airlander 10 fundamentally safer and more efficient than current aircraft. The hybrid electric model that Air Nostrum is awaiting consists of two combustion engines at the rear and two fuel cell electric engines at the front. This poses a great opportunity for hydrogen in aviation as Airlander 10 would be one of the first aircraft to use fuel cells in a commercial flight. This ability to use hydrogen as the fuel is aided by the storage space available for hydrogen in the hull of the airship, something which is constrained in current aeroplanes. HAV are planning to replace all of their combustion engines with electric ones by 2030, paving the way for 100% zero emission flight in the near future. The Airlander 10's aerodynamic profile is also something HAV have heavily developed and tested, working closely with Mercedes AMG Petronas F1 team to optimize their design. Through a combination of wind tunnel testing at Mercedes facility in Silverstone and computational fluid dynamics, HAV were able to significantly reduce the drag forces acting on the airship. 
HEV have also designed the hull of the airship such that it creates lift when moving forward, similar to an aeroplane. This means that at cruising speeds, the aircraft is able to shut down both of its front engines, further increasing the overall efficiency of the aircraft. With that, it can be confidently argued that HAV's model provides a greener transport solution to current aircraft. But is it really practical in our current society? HAV admits that the logistical aspects of airship travel will be more comparable to a ferry than a plane, with longer travel times but a more comfortable, quieter flying experience. With a top speed of 130 km per hour, HAV estimates that a trip from Seattle to Vancouver city centre would take just over four hours. That takes into account extra time spent traveling in and out of the city centers, checking in, waiting, and boarding. Whilst the actual flight time of the airship would be incomparable to that of an aeroplane, HAV suggests that the time spent in transit on either side would be significantly less than what passengers are currently used to, aided by a lack of infrastructure constraints. Unlike aeroplanes, airships are not dependent on a runway for takeoff, thus enabling travel from smaller, less crowded terminals away from major airports. As a result, according to HAV's calculations, the city centre to city centre journey from Seattle to Vancouver would only be one hour longer than the equivalent by aeroplane and one hour faster than the same journey by train, with only 4.61 kilograms of carbon dioxide emissions per person. Travelling by car would use up to five times the emissions, albeit two hours faster, dependent on traffic. In addition to a reduction of emissions across the board, HAV argues that the travel experience inside one of their aircraft would be more relaxing than what other modes of transport would be able to offer. Current renders of the aircraft show a spacious cabin with a capacity of 100 passengers and floor-to-ceiling windows that can be opened during the flight. It's fair to say that besides the environmental gains, the very novelty of the flight experience would be a factor in people's decision to use this method of transport. With a maximum range of 4,000 nautical miles and five days of airborne time, HAV is also marketing their aircraft for experiential travel and multi-day excursions to remote areas. So just how realistic is HAV's vision of large-scale airship travel? HAV admits that long-haul flights aren't really in their sights, and instead they are aiming to take on shorter inner-city routes, with examples including Stockholm to Oslo and Liverpool to Belfast. We also have to wait and see how inclined people will be to switch their loyalties from the near-foolproof modern airplanes to airships, given their turbulent history and safety record. Furthermore, it remains unclear what ticket prices will look like, particularly in the early stages of introduction. There are concerns as well surrounding the global shortage of helium, which has driven prices up dramatically. HAV states that there are still 50 years of known helium reserves based on current consumption, and that 600 airlander aircraft would account for just 1% of this. But considering the number of aircraft in the skies today, this would likely cause a problem. For many though, HAV's proposed product poses a futuristic and planet-friendly way to travel. Combining the efficiency of train travel, the views of plane travel, and the space of ferry travel into one very attractive package. And it's not just the passenger travel market that airships are looking to disrupt. The Franco Quebec company Flying Whales is currently developing an airship aimed at transporting cargo, particularly to and from remote and hard to reach areas. With the ability of hovering above and thus not disrupting the terrain below, such airships would bridge the gap between modern cargo planes and helicopters. Flying Wales' first airship, the LCA-60T, is set to be launched in 2026 with a cargo capacity of 60 tonnes. HAV also has their own larger capacity aircraft on course for introduction in 2030, which will have a capacity of 50 tonnes of cargo or 200 passengers. It is clear that as the aviation industry rushes to minimise its carbon footprint, innovation will be required across all its sectors. In this case, that has meant looking back at a technology that in its demise was deemed too unsafe and ineffective when compared to the emerging aeroplane machinery. 
Yet revisiting this design with the modern technologies we now have access to has opened a whole new door for the aviation industry to explore and develop. Time will tell whether the skies will once again be filled with these majestic balloons, but the need for out-of-the-box solutions is stronger than ever. My name's Luke, and this was The Upshift.